All right, today is a different type of video and people should obviously decide for themselves what they think of that. We are the capital from Hunger Games. Now, I said we because I'm loosely referring to the United States and that's where I live, but I don't actually mean we as in me myself necessarily because I'm just not part of that social level. That being said, I live here and engage in that system and maybe I'm more like a shop owner or one of the low level entertainers that effectively wander the capital streets and make a living while doing so, but when I look around, that's what I see. Let me explain. For anyone who isn't familiar with The Hunger Games, it's a book trilogy written by Suzanne Collins with its first publication in 2008. The premise is fairly simple, but in summary, it's a dystopian world of corruption and control where the capital, Pan Am, controls 13 other districts providing what it needs to live in complete and total excess. In order to keep those districts in line every year, they select tributes, two from each district, and make them fight to the death in a sort of hyper-gamified grand arena. And while the details, of course, don't necessarily represent modern American culture to the letter, we don't do anything like that per se, really. The general atmosphere is what I'm talking about. And once you see it, it's kind of hard not to keep seeing it. I'm just going to read a little bit here about the Capitol from a fairly well-written book analysis website. So yeah, here it is. Society and culture. And this part in particular is from the book itself. Quote, what must it be like, I wonder, to live in a world where food appears at the press of a button? How would I spend the hours I now commit to combing the woods for sustenance if it were so easy to come by? What do they do all day, these people in the capital, besides decorating their bodies and waiting around for a new shipment of tributes to roll in and die for their entertainment? End quote. That's from the book itself, but the further description of the capital culture is what I find to be most interesting. The capital is marked by abundance and luxury. They have automatic food dispensers that bring forth the most exotic food that anyone from the districts has ever seen. To be able to eat more of this exotic food, the citizens of the capital drink a liquid that causes them to vomit, thereby allowing them to taste but not digest their food. This is in stark contrast to the people of the districts who starve from the lack of food. As a society, the capital is filled with vain and superficial people who are concerned only about fashion and food. The citizens disfigure their bodies with dyed skin, tattoos, ornaments, jewels, and plastic surgery. They wear different wigs every day and speak in a strange accent. They barely open their mouths when talking and end their sentences with a high intonation. They speak in high-pitched voices, have clipped words, and strange vowel sounds. Most of them also tend to hiss the letter S. The people of the capital enjoy melodrama and theatric bloodshed. They eagerly take part in the Hunger Games, either as spectators, gamblers, or sponsors. They are extremely self-centered and only care about the tributes according to how much entertainment value they provide. That's a pretty visceral image, right? That's kind of the description that they have on that website. So how exactly do I sit here and say, you know what, that sounds like America? Well, for starters, exotic food absolutely arrives at the press of a button. Some would say it's an impressive feat of modern engineering and global supply lines. Others might say it's an excessive waste, but it happens. Thankfully, we don't induce ourselves to vomit when we eat. At least no one I know does that. But think about this with a layer of abstraction. How many people have seen the show Is It Cake on Netflix? Yes, no, anyone? It's not a bad show, it's entertaining, for sure, in a way, but think about the concept fully. For starters, it's not alone. There's other similar programs as well, a lot of them, like Cake Boss or Sugar Rush, but when you see what's really happening and you compare it to the capital, it's not so far off. Huge amounts of resources are being poured into the production and display of these exotic cakes while they film them every step of the way with a cash prize, and they get basically picked at and then thrown away. The food is wasted, and it's not quite the same as eating with the intention to vomit afterward, but it's a demonstration of just how excessive the culture has become. Some people might roll their eyes here, and I understand that to a degree, but I catch myself thinking about the fact that America is witnessing a record increase to the homeless population in the past couple of years in particular, with even more dramatic examples in major cities. The amount of wasted energy, resources, and food in a time like this, purely for the sake of shallow, hypersaturated entertainment, while people starve, well, it's obviously at least partially similar. Still, one example doesn't constitute a pattern, and after I started really thinking about it, there was no turning back. Citizens disfigure their bodies, dyed skin, ornaments, jewels, and plastic surgery. How does that compare? On the level of pop culture, if we think of a very specific example, which some people may or may not know of, there's a rapper named Lil Uzi who embedded a $30 million pink diamond in his forehead. It didn't last very long, supposedly it would kill him if it got removed, something like that, but then his own fans yanked it right out of his skull, and he's fine. 
But it's very difficult to imagine a more poignant example of disfiguring one's own body for the sake of wealth and excess. Not enough? Anecdotal? Just one example? Okay, let's focus more on the broader population. The most common elective surgery worldwide is botulinum toxin. I don't know if that's exactly how you say it, but yeah, Botox for short. It's one of the most poisonous biological substances known to mankind, and yet, as of 2021, there were over 7 million procedures being performed every year. Narrow the focus, and we can see that in the United States, in particular, the combined number of surgical and non-surgical cosmetic treatments, such as Botox or rhinoplasty, breast enhancements, etc., has risen dramatically in the past 20 years. Surgical procedures roughly doubled, while non-surgical cosmetic procedures have risen by a multiple of 10. According to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, in 2020, the phenomenon has only increased since that point in time, $16.7 billion were spent on cosmetic or plastic enhancement procedures, and with the rate of increase being what it is, that figure is rapidly rising. Food, body augmentation, what about fashion? Yeah, that one's really easy. How many people have seen or heard about the Met Gala? Stuff like this. Ring a bell? I don't know how much closer the comparison could possibly be, but every single year, the richest people in the country get together and wear things like this to a dance, and the word similar just doesn't even begin to describe it. Our level of infatuation with this concept is so defined, there's an actual television program called The Hunger Games Capital Couture. It's like we forgot that they were the dystopian oppressors in this situation, and now we legitimately emulate the level of vanity and narcissism on purpose for the sake of entertainment and fashion. This is where I have to take a step back. America is a dominant military nation with bases in over 60 different countries around the world. We rely on imports now more than ever, while we directly influence politics all over the planet. In 2010, a situation called Cablegate, as a result of WikiLeaks, shook the political establishment and revealed just how much influence America exerts over foreign nations. And that's just the start. America relies on resources from other countries at an increasing rate of demand, echoing the reliance that the capital had on the 12 supporting districts, and we do this because of cheaper labor. It's not an all-encompassing reality just yet, but it's getting there. When it comes to surveillance, the parallel is very obvious. The capital in the Hunger Games relied on surveillance and control to perpetuate its power and pull off the games themselves. And when it comes to America, as exposed by Edward Snowden, there is both legal and illegal mass surveillance taking place nationwide, even so far as a global scale. The moral decay of Pan Am, the capital, was only possible because media and entertainment propaganda was successful in its manipulation of the people. America? Our own president is now tweeting that the price of concert tickets is too high, and his administration is working to crack down on those junk fees, while the actual state of American infrastructure and well-being is under siege. The self-benefiting world of progressively escalating advertising and product services has become so intense and the programs themselves are so convincing, we actually believe them. Despite numerous historical examples where large corporations deliberately produced and sold things that were harmful or deadly just for profit, we look around now and criticize each other for doubting the corporations or those products. And the nation has become so disconnected from the actual state of the world, the normal extent of our engagement with what would normally be crushingly horrible topics, is pressing like on Facebook or Instagram. It's like witnessing the final stages of an insidious cancer, as it becomes clear that moral preservation comes second, firmly behind the imperative to make a bunch of money. And as a result, we no longer value each other and our own bodies in a way that can be sustained. Sure, maybe I'm being overly dramatic here, but when I sat down and started to really think about why I keep coming back to this video idea, we are the capital, it started to make more and more sense, because the similarities are everywhere. We're distracted from what matters by industrialized media, we emulate the worst possible aspects of dystopian fiction on purpose, and we persistently consume at a rate that is completely unsustainable, as the foundation beneath us openly crumbles. We look like them, we act like them, and we exist in a culture that seems to aggressively continue on a pathway of similarity, because why? Is it really so appealing? Is modifying our bodies to be something else other than how we were born so desirable? Are we really this easily programmed by reality television to think that we need to look, act, and dress like whatever we see on a screen? Are we so desensitized to the reality of scarcity that we genuinely think multi-million dollar entertainment programs simply built on the premise of wasting food is somehow good? Or is it something else? In my view, America basically is the capital, 
it's happening for a lot of separate reasons, but it's happening regardless. And for a while now, I kind of just wanted to make a video about it. Not sure how this will go, obviously quite different than the normal content on the channel, but yeah, let me know feedback down below. That's about it. If you want to support, there are links down below in the description, merchandise, social media, Patreon, locals, and memberships. Way better than AdSense for those who are interested in a monthly subscription there. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.